Starting with the example one then, I'm going to start you off kind of basic, and I'm going to ask you, even before I get to 4 equals 4, let me just make this note because it's not in the, in the booklet. I just kind of want you to know what the difference is between what we've, we've been doing for the first 24 lessons. We've been doing algebraic expressions. Here's the example. If I give you x uh, plus 6, right now as is, do you know what the value is of x? No. You don't, right? But if I give you a value for x and I tell you that x equals 2, and I ask you to evaluate it with x being 2, what do you get? Eight. You get 8. There's no equal sign in, a, in an algebraic expression. I have to give you the value to substitute in. Now here's the difference between expressions and equations. If I did this, and I don't tell you what the value is for x, can you now figure it out? What is it? Just shout it out. Four. That's the difference. Once you see that equal sign, you can solve that equation for x. We haven't done any of that up to this point. We're going to start today. Okay. As simple as, as this is, I want you to look at this equation and put this into your own words. What does this mean, this here? There's more than one way to say it, so just throw it out there. 4 equals 4. 4 goes into 4 evenly. Anything else? Could we say the quantity or the number on the left is equal to the number on the right? Okay. That's kind of what I want you to get at is it doesn't, in this case, it's a quantity, it's a number. It doesn't have to be a number. I can tell you, no matter what, these two quantities are equal. We don't know what x is, but we kind of do. Because in order for it to be equal, what does x have to be equal to? It has to be equal to 4. That's what an equation is. An equation is telling you that no matter what's on the left side of that equal sign, that value has to be the same as what's on the other side of the equal sign. We're going to write that down. The quantity on the left is the same as the, as the quantity on the right. Pretty basic, I realize that, but every example is going to build on the previous example. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom here. I want you to think of an equation as like a scale. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of visualize this using blocks and myself. I realize I can't do a picture of me on the blog, but we're going to write it down so you can get an idea. Um, can you see my hands? Yeah. How many blocks do I have in each hand? Kind of tough to see, but it is four, right? Think of an think of an equation like a scale, and the balance point of the scale is directly in the middle, which is me. Whereas here on the smart board, it's the equal sign. Ready? Am I balanced now? No. Which way would I tip? Um, your left. Towards my left, right? You're right. Okay. Ready? Here's the question. As simple as this is. In order to balance out again, what do I need to do? Dan, I could take one away, or what else can I do? Jen, add one. or I can add one. What if I drop two from this side? What do I have to do to the other side? I could add two back, or what would I do to the other side? Take away two. Okay? If I drop one from this side, you got to drop one from this side. Am I balanced? Yes. Drop one, drop two, drop one, drop two. Am I still balanced? As simple as that, as that is, that is a fundamental concept of algebra. Don't forget that. We're going to come back and revisit it. Let's move on. 
going back to this idea of the quantity on the left is the same as the right, sometimes they give you the quantity in expanded form. In order to figure out whether the two values are equal, you want to standardize the expression as much as you can. So can I do 6 plus 3? What's 6 plus 3? Uh -huh. I'm going to put that in standard form, 9. This is already in standard form. And obviously, 9 is equal to 9. It balances out. So yes, this quantity, 6 plus 3, is the same as the quantity 9. Here we have two expressions on either side of the equal sign. We have two quantities. What's 5 plus 2, Matt? Seven. Karen, what's six plus, 1 plus 6? Are they balanced? Mm -hmm. Right, yes. Stretcher, what's 5 times 8? 40. Izzy, what's 50 minus 9? 41. Is it balanced? When we say something's not equal, you can put a line through it, and we'll also write the word no. So again, I'm just building on this idea that in order for the two quantities to be equal, think of it like a scale. Everything's got to balance out. Next page. Okay, in example two, it's the same thing as four, four equals four. You can't take me home. Well, you can, but you don't want me at your house. I'd eat too much. So we have to visualize and make a model of what I was showing you with the, the four bars in each arm. So we're going, to do a, we're going to do a tape model diagram. I'll do four blocks, then my equal sign, and I'll do four more blocks on my right. Draw that out. And by the way, what is each block worth? One. So you can put a little one in here too if you want. Right now, is that balanced? Can you get those, Matt? Just put them on the table for me, bud. Thank you. Okay, next. And I'm going to be able to do something that you can't. Well, you can, but I don't want you to. I'm going to remove one square with an eraser from the left side. If you want, you could put a line through it, but don't erase it. Are my quantities equal? No, it's kind of like what I was showing you with the blocks, right? So the answer is no. What do I have to do on the other side in order to balance it? Now, I could add to one to my left, but I'm asking you, what do I need to do to the other side? I need to take away a block, which you can signify or symbolize using your line. Put a line through it. And here we can write out, remove one block. No longer 4 equals 4, it's 3 equals 3, but they're definitely balanced. Next, number 4. What if I were to add 6 more blocks equaling 1 per block to this side? What do I have to do on the other side to balance it out again? Anna, i got to add 6 more. Again, as simple as it sounds, believe it or not, it is, no pun intended, the building blocks of understanding algebraic equations. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do the same on the other side. Keep that in your head because we're going to revisit this as we progress through the examples. Okay, next page. Now you have your first algebraic equation. You have an unknown number plus 1 equals 9. I know you can do it in your head, so let's just do it and get it out of the way. What's the value for x in order to make these equal? Kath, how did you do it? You're right. How did you do it? You did it too. You did that second way is kind of interesting also. He says he took away one from both sides. 
We're going to revisit that too. But many kids in periods one through t uh, two and three said they could figure out that x is equal to eight, and they kind of did eight plus one in their head equaling nine. Technically, what you did was a you did a mental substitution. You picked out a number, you subbed it in, and you said, oh yeah, eight plus one is nine, and that's the way most kids do it. They they're su using substitution. So substitute eight. We'll just write that out. Most kids did it this way. Substitute eight and did 8 plus 1 equaling 9. And then here, if you do it by actually showing it, kind of the same thing of what we did up, up here, we did it this way. How many of you were able to do it in your head? And that's fine and that's good. I need you to show you the way that we're going to do it from here on out because there's going to come a point where you can no longer do it in your head. It's going to get advanced. And if I don't show you the steps and show you how to do the steps each step along the way, you're going to have some difficulty. This is why I need you to do it the way I'm going to show you to do it. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to revisit my x plus 1 equaling 9, and I'm going to draw a tape diagram for x plus 1 equaling 9. I'm going to make a box for x. Everybody do that. That's the unknown box. I don't know what that quantity is. But I do know if I add a box equaling 1, it's going to be whatever this unknown box is, plus 1, equaling 9 boxes. That's my x plus 1 equaling, do I have 9? Did I count it out right? Yeah, I did. Ready? Let's see how much you remember from the previous examples. If I remove one block from the re left side, what do I've got to do to the right side to keep it balanced? Write that first, and then I'm going to show it to you. Okay. I'm going to do it. Look up here after you're done writing. There's my one that I'm removing here. I'm going to remove one here. I'm going to take out this plus because I'm no longer adding that thing. What's the only thing I have on the left side? X, which I don't know. But look, X equals how many blocks? X equals 8. What you did in the second method that you offered is what's called inverse operation, which I'm going to get to. Okay? But understand how we got to this point of how y x was equaling 8. We had that one extra block on this side. I took it out. It's like dropping that one block on the floor. Whatever I do on the left, got to do on the right. The idea is you want to try to get x all by itself. Once you get x all by itself, whatever is left on the other side of the equal side is your value for x. A little bit of a leap. I can see it in your faces. We kind of did this. I'm just I'm just writing it out. Once we dropped one from each side, we had x equals eight, and eight is the missing value. Are we okay so far? Sort of. It's 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 going to be like riding a bicycle. We're just going to practice it. Let's go to the next page. So the previous example is what's called using inverse operation to solve an algebraic equation. And it's a, it's a key concept in algebra. 
we going back to this, we at x plus 1, we took away 1. So the opposite of adding 1 is taking away 1. And then using example 2, whatever you do on one side, you got to do on the other side. But you kind of get what Gavin was getting at. Let's just practice it more. Let's take a look at example A. First thing that you've got to see is what side is the variable on? Left side or right side of the equal sign? Left. Let's, let's, let's write that down. It's basic, but I, I got to kind of lead you from past experiences. Some kids don't know where to start. We're always going to take a look at the side that has the variable first. Next question you ask yourself, what is being done to the variable? What operation and by how much? Okay, Jay. By how much, Jay? By how much, Jay? Yes. What's the opposite of subtraction? Just say it, everybody. And since we subtracted 5, the opposite of subtracting 5 is add 5. What do we have to do on the other side to balance it out? Gav. We have to do the same thing to the opposite side. We have to add 5. That's by rule. The same thing as like when I was dropping the blocks, guys. If I'm going to subtract 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I've got to do the same thing to the other side. Just stay balanced. Okay. Where's my pen? We're going to show the work now of how to show this inverse operation. We write the original equation like that. The opposite of subtract 5 is, just say it, watch, plus 5. Whatever I do on one side, I've got to do on the other. We now have x all by itself because there's nothing else being done to x. So what you can do is you show this canceling out and this canceling out. We've achieved what we need to achieve. We've got x all by, its, all by itself. And now all we got to do is 13 plus 5 in our heads. 18. 18. We want to check and see if it is indeed 18. We're still not going to circle it yet because we think it's 18, but we're not 100% sure. We have to prove it by writing the original equation. What number are we going to substitute in for x? Say it. 18. We're still not done. Don't leave it like this because you need to write every single expression in standard form. So until we get one single number on one side and one single number on the other side, we're still not done yet. This is still an expanded form, 18 take away 5. What's 18 take away 5? What is it? 13. 13. Please said 14. And now, once you get to those two numbers equal, this is now true. You could circle it. That's what x is equal to. You've proven it. Example B. You now have multiplication. Okay. Which side has the variable, left or right? Right. Right, right. Now, did I mean correct right? Right as in W-R-I-T-E? What's being done to the variable X? 
Aileen, I'm calling on you. What are you doing? To, what's being done to X? Operation and by how much? By? Correct. Right? By 8. Multiply by 8. Caitlin, it's the opposite of multiply by 8. Correct. By rule, what do I got to do on the other side? Stretcher. Yeah. Let's show the work for it. There's my original equation. What's the new symbol for divided by that we taught we, we, we learned two days ago? What symbol am I going to use, Con? Yeah, that bar thingy. Call it a division bar. Divide by eight. Gotta do the same thing on the other side, guys. Divide by eight. This cancels, including that fraction or that uh, division bar. It's gone. We've done what we need to do. We got x all by itself on this side. What is 64 divided by 8? Which I'm hoping you should be able to do in your head. Correct. Right now, we think the value to make, we think the number for x to keep things balanced is 8. Let's go and prove it. Original equation. Jules, what am I substituting in for x? Now look, guys, when I sub it in, I've got to add the dot. I can't put two numbers together like I learned in the beginning of the uh, module. And we can't leave 8 times 8 by itself. We have to write that in standard form, which is 64. And we are good to go. We got one more example, and that's the example of division. Nick, left or right? Nick, what's being done? Good. So, Annie, what's the opposite of divide by seven? What do we have to do on the other side to bounce out? Okay, let's show it. Now, when you show the multiplication of 7, use the dot. Multiply by 7. What cancels out? Well, what cancels out? You got it. And what's the only thing that's left? Finally, we just have to do 10 times 7 in our heads, hopefully. Ed, what's 10 times 7? Seven? 7. Sounds good to me. Let's prove it. Sometimes when you get an answer, it doesn't look like it's going to be right, but you'll see it. It will be. We're going to take our 70 and substitute it in. What's 70 divided by 7? 10. That checks, that proves, and we're good. When you do these, you've got to do it step by step, exactly the way that I show you to do it. Okay, you got to have you have to have good work habits because if not tomorrow, Friday we're going to do 
two-step algebraic equations where there's more than one thing being done to the variable. And you won't be able to necessarily see it in your head anymore. And I know my advanced group, if you want to skip ahead, take a look at your advanced set. By the end of the there's no way you can do it in your head. But if you know the steps, you can get yourself to an answer. Okay? So group up. Uh, you got 10 minutes. If you can't get through all of the exercises, that's fine. But your problem set tonight starts on 16 and finishes through 18. Okay? And my advanced guys, don't go ahead because i got to teach you two-step algebraic equations probably tomorrow or Friday. All right, guys. Thanks.